you know, that's so far away from, you know, what you actually accomplished. You know, it's just not even funny, but that's the only thing they look at. So, no, man, it, it's uh, very instrumental because there were guys that were 40, 50, 60 years old that were going through the same exact thing that I was going through. Like they were flipping properties and selling real estate right next to me. They lose everything just like I did and had to start over in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. And here I was in my mid 20s going through what they were going through in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. And I knew that that was going to be a very monumental, like major, you know, blessing, if you will. So I was happy during that time because I knew that that was going to be kind of the uh, the transition, if you will, from you know really getting like the taste of business you know between like just skimming the top and kind of just getting a taste of it between that and actually knowing how to actually build a business a lot of us learn through experience which takes years you know so you're really excited then you become a little frustrated with you know the learning curve right and then comes the huge disappointment when you don't sell a property in the first three months four months something like that you become very disappointed you feel like you know I put in all this work but I haven't even sold a single property. You know, I should have sold a property by now. Well, who's who's to say that the effort that you put in equals a property sold? You know, why why do you assume that that amount of effort equals a deal, right? Obviously it doesn't because it didn't happen. People are only looking at tax returns and I'm like, wait a minute, that's like not even, you know, that's so far away from, you know, what you actually accomplished. You know, it's just not even funny, but that's the only thing they look at. And I'm like, well, in 2024, you're not going to care what you made in 2021. All right. You're only going to care what you make in 2024. But, you know, the amount of money you make in 2024 is going to be predicated on what you do this year to build your business in terms of how many people you talk to, right, to create friends in the market, right, and then build your brand on the back of the data you collect from those people. It's really the bottom line. Like, we should be data collectors first, right? Data collectors and friendship creators first. That should be our main goal every day. And then real estate agents second. Our goal when we call and talk to people should just be to make friends and see if there's something we can do to help. If they need to do something today, great, let's do a deal. If we're talking to enough people, we're going to find deals, but more so we're really building this base and accumulating, you know, the, the people that we need, the, the future customers that we need to really have a, uh, have a really uh, large business and something that's going to, withstand you know market cycles and market swings you know the number one reason why someone picks a real estate agent in today's market is because they had a friend in the business we went through a cycle of digital where people chose their agent online right we went through several cycles where people are like well, I'm not gonna just pick a random agent online anymore I had a bad experience right I picked a bozo right so now they're like I'm gonna find my properties online but I'm gonna call the agent that I I'm friends with that you know I, I have a relationship with with. That's where it's at. And so just think about instead of like, you're calling these people anyway. So if you call them and just say, Hey, Mr. Seller, you don't know me and I don't know you, but will you sell your house so I can make some money? That's that. That's what those scripts are saying. It's saying, hey, not too concerned about you, really. Don't really want to be your friends. I just want to see if you want to sell your house so I can make a commission. I just want to see what you, Mr. Seller, can do for me, the agent, right? The only way to do any of what you just said is through one thing, real conversation. Hearing your voice, hearing how you breathe, body language, speed of voice, tone of voice, right? That's the only way you're going to get to the point where they actually trust you. You can do social media and message people and, and do videos and all you want to. But until you actually talk to them, you know, they're not completely sold, right? Um, you can warm them up with all that stuff, but then if they talk to you and they don't get a good feeling, they're not gonna, they're not gonna move forward. Your, 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 your number one job is to be a data collector, friendship creator. Your number one skill is to make people feel comfortable with you. So just define that for people that don't quite understand what you mean by data collector. Create like emails, phone numbers, names, right? Talking Contact to people. information. Yes, talking to okay. people, right? you know, making them feel comfortable with you, right? Enough to stay in touch and giving you their email, giving you their phone number, giving you all their data so that you can put in your database to then build personal brand. Cold calls is not the common denominator. You can build your business without cold calls. 
But you cannot build your business or have closings without real conversation. You have to understand the philosophy here behind, you know, you got to understand the foundation of the perception here, right? So then you can start to break down, you know, how to reverse engineer ourselves into as many closings as we want to have. Go to zero to diamond.com, free course, lesson called Ricky's Weekly Email. There's a tutorial, I screen share my computer, there's weekly email ideas, and there's a link that goes back to every email I've sent for the last three years, the exact email. Copy it verbatim, the exact template, put your stuff in there, right? Don't change it at all and send it out every single Wednesday. But the numbers look like this for me. I've closed, you know, one to two percent a year. So if I have five thousand five thousand, I'm closing fifty to hundred deals a year. You know, ten thousand. I've I've closed a hundred deals a year. My database is like fifteen thousand right now. But again, I'm very passive. I don't call and follow up and check on people. I, I'm very passive with it because hey, I'm doing a hundred deals a year. It's it's hard to keep up with two deals a week and run these other businesses. And the weekly email produces those two deals a week. And that's all really I want out of that business. So I'm happy with that. If I wanted to ramp it up, sure, I could go through my database and call and check on people and try to ramp things up. But, you know, I'm at a different place right now. I quit cold calling five years ago, you know, and, and I made 100,000 calls without a dialer all by hand in the 15 year period. If you take today's scenario where you have automatic dialers and you can get as much data as you want with the click of a mouse you could literally make those hundred thousand calls in two to four years right and do the same damage that it took me 15 years to do in two to four years and you could be done you could be done if you really hit it hard now, a lot of people in your position you know that get to that kind of production bring on traditional team members mm -hmm. uh, have you ever thought about taking your business in that direction or what's kept you from doing that well, I tried it one time and went through about 12 agents in a year and a half. And what I realized is that that traditional team model is really um, broken, I guess. It, uh, number one, the worst part about it is the really good agents come in and learn everything they can and leave, right? Who's going to give somebody part of their commission if they don't have to? Unless you're an average producer. But I'm different, but I wanted to learn the process. Some of these teams take the, they do, they handle the transaction coordination and for you and all this stuff, you know, but as the new agent, you're not really learning that part of the process, which you probably need to learn. Now, there's an argument there because I know an agent that started their own brokerage and their their part of their deal is, you know, change. And I said, well, they're not learning. And they're like, well, they don't need to learn. Just let me handle it. I'm, I'm thinking, well, that's that's a good point. I mean, yeah, yeah I, I can see your point there. But at the same time, I thought about it ever since I talked to that broker. And I think, no, I still I still would want to know how that process works so that if something happens, I know that I can, I understand at least that process. So right. everybody's different, man. That That's why these teams exist. And that's why there's team members on these teams that stay there because everybody's different. Basically, 80% of my time on a business that I was losing money, taken away from a business that's making a million dollars a year. And so it, I had I had a serious complex about it, you know? Uh, you know, is this what I should be doing, you know? And I had a lot of, um, you know, frustration points and self-doubts, you know, uh, about it, you know? But, you know, the agents reaching out to me and telling me how much it was helping them, I just couldn't help but to believe that, you know, that it was something that, uh, I don't know, changed the industry or, you know, uh, end up being something really big. So, and, and you know, it, it's, it's got to the point where, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, that business is by leaps and bounds more successful than my real estate business. I'm going to Miami, you know, in two weeks, I'm kicking off my own tours. There's a, uh, you know, there's, I don't want to say the number, but there's over a thousand agents registered for this thing. You know, that's humbling to know that more than a thousand agents, you know, want to come to and, and be in the same room with me, you know, and let me spit, you know, what I'm going to spit at them, you know? So it's got to the point where now I'm doing my own tours with a thousand agents showing up. And so is it as big as I think it can be? No. Is it, is it really massive to the point where some really incredible things are happening? Absolutely. Absolutely.